It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Geek Domo. Lock Six Time. And Trend Day. Let's get to the show right about now. Hello, everybody. And Tobrin and Legendary Neurotoxin. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> it's going to take me like four days to redo that. Hold on. <laughs> i got to put my headphones on, otherwise the echo is going to be crazy. There we go. Is it better? Is it better, better? Testy, testies, one, two, three. So good. Excellent. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to EverQuest Next uh, into the portal and EverQuest Next destruction. Destruction. <laughs> we destroy EverQuest Next because it is fully destructible, as they've said before. I don't think they meant the whole thing. Mm, yeah. Can't we don't worry about the whole back. thing. Please. Safe hands, Domo. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome back to the show, uh, Mr. Drunken Monkey, aka Legendary Neurotoxin. Drunken Monkey. Yes, thank you very much. Drunky Monkey. <laughs> Drunky Monkey. <laughs> and uh, Locke is back. Yay, Locke. Hey, everyone. How are you, How are you uh, knees? It's good, it's good to be back. I, I missed you guys. Show us the breast you got oh. implanted on your knees. Are we allowed to on Twitch? Oh, maybe not. Okay, come, yeah, uh, that whole thing they just did <laughs> with Sony. Does come under gaming content? Playroom, yeah. It can. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to check that. Mm -hmm. Maybe next week. And, uh, of course, Mr. Trendane, as always. He's back. And then Tobran is back for yet another adventure with us. Yay. Yay. Do you have any pizza left over? I do. I have a whole pizza left. <laughs> That'll make no sense to anyone else. It should be oh, it won't. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I was live streaming, and then we ordered a pizza. And it we still can't chaotic. get Tobran to grow a beard. He's tried. No. I'm well, being Scottish, Scottish that is, that is the same as up. having a beard. He keeps going... <laughs> Like that, making his face go red, and it just isn't working. He's popped a couple blood vessels in his eyes. You're supposed to do it like the the, the Plato barber shop. Yeah, like this, and it all just kind of comes out. That'd be so easy. It would be, but it would also be messy. It would be Sorry. having a Plato beard. Just a couple yeah. of years, yeah. All right, so here we are. Just rub some charcoal on your face. There you go. We'll fool everybody. I'm sure they got those things they use in the movies. They could put like a fake beard on or something. I'll get a stipple, fake beard for next week. Stipple sponge. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, for those in the, who might be new in the audience, um, what we do is we have a discussion in the beginning here. We talk about some new topics that's happened since last week or recently. And then we're going to then open the floor up for you to send your questions in. So while you're in the audience, all you have to do is uh, type in question in brackets and uh, the moderator who is today is Meka, as always, actually. She's in the audience. Meka will, exactly just like that, Meka will grab the question and throw it into our chat and then we're good to go. We'll answer your questions as best we can. We are not developers uh, and we do all have uh, restraining orders to keep us away from the developers. Uh, so Some of us more than others. Yes, specifically <laughs> Locke. Actually, oh, I don't. Well, it, that's... That's not quite fair, because I, I followed mine on Omid's first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had the first one. <laughs> just because just just he won the uh, <laughs> he won the right in court, you know. Yeah. I won the moral. Yeah, they, they love having me around, but unfortunately, they just want my beer. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Drunky Munkin, uh, well, let's call you Legendary Neurotoxin, that's easier. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's, that's what people know me by. The uh, <laughs> just wrote this really epic story about uh, brewing in EverQuest Next, and he went into the detail of how much specific gravity we're going to need for each <laughs> for each vial that we create before we release the brew. I mean, not quite that much level of detail, but I've definitely um, qu put quite a lot of uh, time and effort into it and really tried to put it in the context of not just brewing beer, but really brewing uh, any sort of magical fermented beverage in general, because you know, alcohol isn't the only magical substance that can be fermented in EverQuest Next and Landmark. So, 
it uh, it makes sense that it's actually a complicated and worthwhile system. Um, you know, something that rivals the the level of, I guess, complexity that you would expect for like the weapon crafting or uh, even house building. Mm, there's yeah, I mean, there's there's really a lot that goes into it, and then where it can actually be applied to is a, um, you know, it, it, it it's little market transactions, just doing something out in the field, or somebody who's really trying to make an empire on just making absolutely epic potions that you know you're going to need so and so's potion if you're actually planning to do the the toughest kind of content to go after the uh, the bosses and the the rallying call events. I want something like in The Princess Bride. Like you go to this guy's house and <laughs> he's got his wife in there. So and chocolate. Yeah, chocolate covering on the thing. And What was that guy's name? 50 Miracle Poises. Max. Miracle Max, yes. Miracle. So Miracle Max. I want Miracle Max's special potions that I can take when I start fighting Nagafin's younger brother, Ralph. Yeah, you're going to get some more challenging <laughs> questions. Like, like what was Count Rugen's first name? Mm. Ooh. Reginald? No, not even. Uh, Christopher Guest. Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Christopher was his first name. <laughs> um, oh, it is. It is a. Uh, in all seriousness, it's a. It's a really fantastic piece by uh, the legendary neurotoxins done, and it's. Uh, it's. It's incredibly in depth, and I think what it. What it says about. Um, you know, they they call it craft brewing, don't they? You know what it what it says about crafting in MMOs compared to the uh, knowledge and dedication that goes into crafting in real life. I suppose you know why why shouldn't high end crafting require as much you know as much knowledge and planning as as a high level raid? You know, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have to be like all at once. You don't have to worry about you know active. I'm, I'm forget the. I'm terribly sorry, <laughs> Nero doesn't. I forget all the specific nom nomenclature. But you know why? Why shouldn't there be um, active uh, parts of the process that we have to you know that we have to maintain or at least think about? You know why? Why shouldn't different things have different effects? And you know as you go up in you know power and complexity of potions, you know why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't it be a more complex process to to make that? So simple stuff should be simple, and good stuff should require effort. I think. Yeah, anyway. I, I I don't like it because it's got warts. <laughs> <laughs> it might give you warts. I mean, that's the sign of a very strong potion. Yeah, that was the uh, the the second kind of case scenario that I put at the very bottom was the. Um, the guy who might be a great brewer, but he knows nothing about distilling, and that's the same thing that happens in real life. If you don't know how to distill, you're making methanol. You're not making moonshine. You're making blind juice. Which would be great <laughs> if you drank some of his potions or, or whatever, and you went blind for a while. Like, <laughs> yeah. Your whole well, that was, was black. <laughs> well, that was the the entire scenario. Is that the, the they're gonna go fight this dragon that's been harassing their stuff? So they get these you know epic potions and they have them distilled to make sure they don't you know slosh around in their belly and take up a bunch of space. So they go out thinking that these potions are gonna you know get them ready for like fire resistance, charm resistance, fear resistance. They're gonna just fuck this dragon up. Mm -hmm. And they. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and they they drink it, and aside from ogres who, for whatever reason, their physiology is immune to methanol, everybody else drinks it, and yeah, they're immune to fire and charm and fear, but they're blind. Immune to light. It's just a yeah. super stealth potion, is yeah. all it is. It's <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah, it puts the monster so. stealth, and yeah. Yeah, yeah so they exactly. they kind of get the floor wiped, and it costs them a pretty penny, plus you know the repair bill and all that. You know, fun stuff and feeding loot to a dragon. That's never a good thing. God, Omid is here. Oh, hello, Omid. <laughs> How's it going, Omid? Ooh, I gotta turn my phone down. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was going to say, does, every time a bell rings, every we get an Omid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that, everybody. Turn that off. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, for those who might not have seen the article, uh, it's, it's pretty lengthy and it's really in depth and it's great. Uh, I put the link up here. It's really short. It's bit.ly forward slash LN Brew for Legendary New Toxin Brew. Go ahead and click that or type that in and it should go right to his uh, the thing. Oh, he's back from his boating disaster. <laughs> so, uh, 
I think I saw that video. It's like you're in a speedboat and there's like six girls in bikinis around you and all of a sudden you hit a wave at like 55 miles an hour and everyone flies around and everyone smashes their face into the walls. Was that your ah. video? We'll, we'll hear back in a second. <laughs> I hope that's not him. That'd be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> See, Locke thinks it would be incredibly amusing. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, yeah, so but, I made it like uh, full Miami voice mode. Just... Okay, so the thing I've been kind of tripping out on is every week the different uh, video that Omid's in and the little changes to the side profile of his little chin scruff. Yes. It's always a little different, and yeah. it's you know it's very thing, interesting to see how it changes. Thing. Goes back. <laughs> it's the Grand Vizier look, I've told you. Like from the front, like as if you were talking to him. It's like, hey, it's Omid, it's a cool guy, he's on your side. And then he turns to the side and it's just the evil face. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he flips forward. Yeah, I've, I've, said, I've said this before, it's the, it's the Vizier point. Yeah. You can't trust him. Everyone, <laughs> you can't, everyone watching. I'm saying you this actually video. trust Locke. There are very few people you actually trust. <laughs> I've noticed this. It's not, it's not that I'm a weird paranoid recluse, though. You know, it's not like I live in a log cabin in the woods or anything. Do I look like I live in a log cabin yes. in the woods? Well, as long as the log cabin is half blue and half white, yes, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's a log cabin, but in Minecraft. So everything's all square. <laughs> all right, no. so let's get on with the show, I guess. Uh, oh, everyone, make sure you keep writing in the questions. What's the news from last week? What, what came out that was uh, new and exciting? Um, there wasn't anything super <clears throat> good, thing, apart from roundtable stuff. Yeah, we had a we had a wonderful new roundtable response video. I suppose after the uh, with the Thanksgiving break and everything, I'm sure yeah, they were getting some it. much much needed R and R. But the uh, roundtable response video that we had, it was actually about a topic that proved to be very very popular when it first started uh, first started doing the rounds on the forums, which was the the day night cycle. You mm -hmm. know, obviously a lot of people have a lot of fond memories of that from EverQuest. So it was a big thing. You know, we talk about wanting the world to feel alive, and you know that's obviously part of that and um i i believe i may be wrong on this but we we had a majority on this didn't we yeah it was uh, so me this, said yeah. video, you said it's yeah. not a duality it's a it's not a plurality like, yeah plurality whatever <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is just a purely something that I've learned from watching those videos. <laughs> I had no idea before. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to see and it's great that um, the players and um, SOE are on the same page about it as well. Mm -hmm. So the, what they were saying is that at night, everyone wants it to be more dangerous than during the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, not that night is any more dangerous than the day, but like he was saying in the video, I think Terry might have been the one saying it, that when uh, at nighttime you just lose, maybe it was me, you just lose a little bit less of your senses so you can't tell what's happening over here as far that you could during the daytime so it feels more dangerous you feel more claustrophobic and more closed in All right you're fighting the same bear you'd be fighting during the day except you don't know what else is around you mm -hmm. can't really see the terrain you can't see escape routes if it starts to maul you and you need to get away so the danger level is heightened Unless you're, you know, some race that maybe gets a bonus during the night and gets night vision, in which case, I don't know, maybe they have limited vision during the day as a counter to that. Could be. Like, Could especially, be. Uh, like, Dark Elves, you know, they had a, supposedly in D&D &D style, you know, you're not supposed to be able to see as well during the day. The um, the other thing I thought would, would be interesting, they didn't cover it in the, in the round table, but for one, it was amazing to see Terry in a t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, nice two. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Two um, <laughs> was the fact that you know when, when they were discussing the. I think it was. I think you're right. I think it was Amy who mentioned that you can't see the bear that's about to kill you until you like literally bump into him. And as somebody who has spent some time walking around in the woods in the middle of the night, when you've got a torch, torches make for some very creepy shadows, shadows around you when you're trying to walk at night it's very very you know it doesn't help much it helps a little bit but it helps you see better but it also helps you see shit that isn't there yeah. you know? <laughs> so long it's, shadows behind the trees mm -hmm. that are cast when then yeah it's really freaky <clears throat> even, it's, even a flashlight you know you just it's really yeah. freaky in the woods at night so that sense of danger should be there and i'm i agree that they went with that that thought too I think it's um, it's interesting that it's uh, it is a question of 
perception, as they've said. But um, you know, they they also said that they wanted they want the world to be uh, to feel like it's still explorable at night. You know, people aren't going to be totally cut off from that. And I, I think that was a bit of a point of contention with some people. You know, the usual sky is falling crowd, where it's like, oh, it's not going to be pitch black, easy mode, well clone. You know, with those mm-hmm. people that I love so much. But um, it's kind of I, I thought it was an interesting thing how they seem to. It's it's almost like a balance thing, isn't it? It's like a seesaw. You have the perception thing on one side, and as it gets darker, you know the world gets more dangerous because you lose perception. But then you know you need to. So as <laughs> as the world like isn't as dark, and you have more perception of the world, it's almost like you need to. Maybe it's not like a seesaw. You need to bring the danger up as well to kind of compensate at night. So it'll be less less that it'll be pitch black but more that there'll be dangerous elements within the world. And light sources, as um, Trendane was saying, is a really interesting thing because it kind of casts shadows and everything. And it could potentially be like a thing that you use to ward off certain enemies and like make them afraid of you and not want to come near the light because they want to be in the dark. But at the same time, it could act as a beacon for more sort of intelligent, you know, maybe humanoid races like orcs or anything. They'd be able to see you from a lot further away. So, you know, there's that kind of... There's that risk versus reward thing to even having a light source on you. And playing moth. with darks were interesting. Moth, <laughs> oh, yeah. centaurs, yes. Moths. Oh, yeah. yeah, centaur moths. And, uh, yeah, the fact that so much, of, <laughs> so much of the game and the procedural content is going to be underground, which I assume will have dark areas as well, it means that they can really play with the idea of, you know, uh, mobs and enemies that, you know, that favor the dark and, you know, come out at night. And does that mean that underground is actually safer at night and overground is less in certain areas? Who knows? When uh, when you were playing, I mean, we're we're talking about a game that's very similar to Minecraft, you know, and and in Minecraft, a lot of times the creepers come out at night, right? So what you would do is when you're first starting off, you'd start digging your hole down and you'd close off the top area so that you were safe from anything digging down. I guess, I'm wondering if you're going to be able to do some, something similar here to keep the bad things from sneaking in behind you while you're down there digging. So you can close it off somehow, put up a bunch of rocks, yes. and then uh, go down and dig a bunch uh, underground and feel safe for the night, and then you can go back outside when the daytime comes. Have we heard any specifics on how long the day-night cycle is exactly? Have they said anything? Not exactly. I don't believe I, I thought... I saw a lot of people saying like three hours or five hours or something around those range. So uh, maybe something like that. That's not really, you know, I haven't seen any official word anywhere, but just for a while, I remember looking through all the comments and stuff. It seemed like people were more in like the three to five hour range. And personally, I think something that doesn't line up evenly with the 24 hour cycle works really well. So that way, someone who logs in consistently at noon every day will have a slightly different experience every day rather than being locked in at, you know, noon or midnight every time they log in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. They said they, oh, well, Mead says they'll be responding to that in the next couple of weeks. Great. Thank you. For nice. Okay, it's, it's I like still, Sirol's. Still being discussed. Get involved. Yeah. Get on the phone. Say what you think. I like Sirol's answer. 78 minutes and 27 seconds. Well, see, that is 78 minutes worth of night and 27 seconds worth of daytime. Right. <laughs> 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 because you know you watch all these videos these really cool videos and they show that really cool night cycle and day cycle and you see the way that changes the shadows and stuff and it's like oh that's so pretty I wonder if it's going to be really that short <laughs> I was th- you mentioned being underground and whatnot. I found myself wondering you know, what would happen if you if you get down into one of these, these crystalline caverns with the giant crystals on the wall and you've got a torch mm-hmm. and like the light hits it and then it just fractalizes everywhere like awesome. okay that it would should, destroy awesome. my processor power <laughs> <That's so fun. laughs> I would say from the uh, uh, from the videos and stuff like you know the sun moves across the sky but the, the light's directional so as it goes through you know as it goes through trees and stuff so that that's a that is a really good point you know how how that's going to be affected uh, underground the direction of light it's pretty cool Ooh. Yeah. if if they if they do that really really well like the, the the light is actually coming from the sun I would love to see somebody build something like a Stonehenge thing that at certain times of day fantastic. it casts this beam oh, yeah. you know, on the, that would be very just cool just like a little mix of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark with uh, the actual yeah. Stonehenge no I would love to yeah. when I was it's younger it's for the Omid statue it, mm. right, oh, yeah. around Omid's feet the Stonehenge is around Omid's feet no, when I was younger I was totally into Stonehenge 
I was like in the whole Druidism thing and all that, and I really I wanted to build it out of concrete here in the United States. Somebody's already done that several times, actually. There's quite a with few Cadillacs. Like, with Cadillacs. Well, there's yeah. a Cadillac hinge, but I'm talking about there's a real replica made out of concrete in a couple of different states in the United States. Actually, there's a, another example that I can think of is ancient Greece. There would be a lot of buildings that would be oriented in such a way that uh, the way the columns and stuff were aligned, it would always provide light no matter what angle the sun was coming in. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that sort of stuff. Honestly, if you want to see what the sunsets and sunlight uh, in general is going to be like, just check out Planet Side 2 and you know look at some of the sunrise sunset videos or just get in the game and look at it. There is one kind of weird oddity, though, is things that are kind of, I guess, towards the far end of the angle. You can perceptibly see them change from like the lights here and then the lights here in one very sudden iteration you know one very sudden tick so I don't know you know what can be done to smooth it if um, that's just the way it works is every few seconds it moves however many degrees or if it's based on minutes or whatever and that sort of thing I'm sure the intervals can be improved so that way it's a lot smoother and that sort of stuff won't happen mm -hmm. um, it's probably just hasn't been done on planet side too because it's such like a, a minor element of the game we're not sitting around looking at the shadows and the light hopefully we're Going and blasting the crap out of each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did, this didn't is they? So, didn't I, didn't I say something recently that they actually made the nights darker in Planet Side Two? Yeah, so. and they they had had them much darker in the past, but I think they're working on revamping the lights and making them better, making them more powerful, longer range, and generally more relevant. And then once that goes in, that'll probably be going in alongside the. Um, the the darker nights actually coming in. I think they're also working on having some continents differentially darker at night than others. Mm, that's interesting. I just I wonder how much you know of the the recent optimization work they've done on Planet Side Two. You know, with the sharing the engine and everything. I wonder how much of that is going to uh, is going to impact EverQuest Next development. Maybe someone actually built that. Yeah, that's this is yeah. in progress. Um, so I remember say, it looks Tober, too short. Tober, they don't have real things in America. I know. Man. There's concrete <laughs> over here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we, just, we just go and look at it. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, no, it, it's pretty cool. I, I like that. I, I would like to make some sort of real things in, in Landmark. That's what I'm kind of looking forward to doing. As you know, I, I've talked about building the Shire, but also yeah. like Stonehenge, what I always wanted to do when I was a kid, you know, that kind of stuff. I'd like to do that. <clears throat> That'd be that'd be amazing if you could if you could make a Stonehenge that really did line up and everything, but then have have a, a certain time of day like as the sun moved in a certain way, actually like spawn a, like you know spawn an event around it, like a kind of dynamic thing, you know, Earth spirits. What about uh, at night? You know, there's some there's a lot of flowers that at night bloom, and like they can yeah. have several flowers that bloom at night, and maybe they could be sort of like on uh, was it Avatar, uh, whatever the name of that planet was, Pandora, right? Mm -hmm. So that when at nighttime everything sort of lights up and turns like bioluminescent, wouldn't that be cool? Like running through like a bioluminescent forest or something. And then you yeah. have and then you have mobs whose AI is attracted to those flowers. So every nighttime you have to you have to protect the the bioluminescent uh, flowers. Oh, well, that's. I mean, that's definitely a part of it. Um, you know, anybody can go out and pick flowers during the day. That's easy. But at night, you know, there's a lot more risk. And if there are, you know, flowers that glow and, you know, have glowing sap or, you know, whatever in them, when you pick them, they're still going to glow for a little bit. And it's kind of going to be a beacon that enemies are going to be able to hone in on. So just picking flowers at night is going to be way more dangerous than during the day. I mean, that's not necessarily, I don't know, that's actually going to be a thing. Or maybe they could also put off a funky odor when they're picked or whatever. But they definitely said there will be different things during different phases. And not even, like, just a cut and dry day and night. Some things will only be available just when the night, you know, sits on or right before the sun comes up or, you know, stuff like that. So there's going to be, you know, some amount of advantage and rewards to being out at different times of the night, not just, you know popping out right at the very end of it before the day uh, starts up again. Uh, Omid just said the word luminescent or bioluminescent was definitely in an email I saw today between Darren and Jeff. I was going to say that'd be amazing if you, like I was just thinking of like you know the the really uh, the really deep sea uh, fish and stuff that have like bioluminescence. If you're having like a dark night and you're making light sources important for players like how cool would that be to have like bioluminescent 
mobs that come out of the night and come after the the luminescent flowers the, and uh, stuff. The male, oh, I, I'm showing the na male, uh, the sci-fi noble pack, and it's luminescent. Yeah. Yeah. So that itself, I mean, the, the players will be able to look that way too. To just That's go sweet. fishing and well, go swimming, and then you wind up becoming the lure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the lights in the suit. Cool. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so uh, that's pretty exciting. No, he just—they just—he just said that the uh, they'll have some sort of bioluminescent. I, I just think it's kind of natural. It is part of the natural world in real life, so why couldn't it be more in the fantasy world too? And uh, the underground too. Uh, some shrooms. There could be certain type of mushrooms underground that bioluminesce. So when you get in a certain area, it's just pitch black, but then all of a sudden the walls and everything are. Are lighting up. I mean, it's it's already in a lot of other games. Guild Wars Two has it, and some of the caves you go into. And if you pick them wrong, they spore all over you, and then you're covered with you know bioluminescent spores. <laughs> that would be awesome. Good luck hiding. But then, but then, make the bioluminescent mobs attracted to you by smell. Ah, oh, this is, this is all. Because we all know you oh. smell light. Yeah, well, that's that's actually something I've been wondering: is can voxels carry smell as one of you know odor as one of the um, properties? And then with that, beyond just being able to carry like flavor and odor, you know, how is it able to scale you know detectability and potency and stuff? Like, if you've just been rummaging <clears throat> around in garbage for the past week and you go out in the forest, Thank you should you smell. Sure. Yeah, you should smell like garbage. Things should be coming after you. Like gigantic Bears. flies should be you know honing in on you i suppose if if you can have a light source because they have light sources and those light sources project so if anything could interact with a light source you could could i'm not a programmer but could you program something in the same way so it was a smell source that wasn't oh, visible yeah. to the player but something else could could react I think to a, so I you could have very, like a proximity thing a very good mechanic for that it was in um what was that that game where you were that wolf spirit and you had to paint stuff. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you. God, why the hell didn't I? Think? Guitar hero. What? <clears throat> anyway, yeah, yeah, guitar. Guitar. <laughs> there was an element where you had to follow the scent of the children that you were trying to find, and it was just like this smoky little trail on the on the ground. And I mean, you could do the same sort of thing with that. You know, maybe maybe Karen would have a stronger ability to track things by scent, and that's how they would see it. All right, Omi just shot us down. He said well, they should be able guy. to uh, do it, but they have no you know, idea if they're planning for anything like that. Probably not because I, the only thing I'm thinking is that um, that's the one sense that we can't impart into the game. Like, we can't smell the game. They don't have any little smell-o-vision things yet. Maybe when I'm Actually, they do. They've had them for a couple but, of years. I've yes, seen them in different... Yeah, but not like mass appeal kind of thing, you know? Oh, no, not mass appeal. They all yeah. kind of suck. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry if anybody who's watching manufactures <laughs> them, but, like, they still they still need a lot of work. They need a lot of work. So, exist. because of that, I think that's probably why they, they might not have even thought to include smell as an option, but, uh, but yeah. Ogre it, loincloths. The ogre loincloths would definitely attract something. <laughs> maybe, maybe ogre females be attracted to your ogre male loincloth well it's you know when when bards are up performing on stage and uh ogre loincloth gets thrown their way you know it's uh, a grade that, that, <laughs> mag that, that magical moment when it clears everyone out it's a it's a rite of passage for for any young bard yeah. I'm slapped in the face with a wet ogre loincloth you know. <laughs> oh, no. let's, let's move on <laughs> well yes no, <laughs> this oh, topic's gonna match us now. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, next, what are we talking about? All right, next. Uh, let's see what's going on here. I figure out the titles. Uh, the landmark <laughs> video that just came out about 15 minutes before we went live, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not gonna actually show it. We can talk about it while it's playing, but uh, I don't want to infringe on any copyrights. So um, to do that, I can play it, and we can talk about it while it's happening. But I can't play it with their audio. What? Yeah. You heard him. Yes. <laughs> fair okay. use. Fair use. The only way. Fair as long use as we're works. talking over it, it's commentary, yeah, and it's, then. Yep. So okay. we can play it, and, and you can be the voice lock. You can be. You can be. Uh, no, Mr. lock could be his own voice. Okay. Oh no! There's a delay on the there's a delay on the stream though. <laughs> All right, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, whatever. I can see it, but only like five seconds after I'm talking. <laughs> May contain inappropriate content for children. 
And right here we have the <laughs> ah, EverQuest sounds. Well, when I was watching this earlier, one of the things that I, I did really like was the fact that um, you know, we, we hadn't seen them build a house before. But I liked it. It was during the building the tower part, um, you know, where he made like one or two segments and then copy you know pasted. copied the big section and then because i do that when i'm trying to copy paste like if i'm trying to say neener 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 i will type it know, three times and then copy and copy. then copy it and then paste it and then copy it nine times and start you know doing yeah. like that. um uh, actually we did have a question come in that we can kind of go through right here, and it was uh, Palace Eight's question. I noticed in the landmark video that her hair was going through the handle of the pickaxe. Do you think they will fix that? No. <clears throat> the reason for it is it's a, it's a whole modeling problem, and it's been in plaguing companies for years. The only way to really get around it is there's a, a thing called Tress X, uh, which is um, uh, makes the hair more realistic, but it, it's very graphics card intensive, and it's to be quite honest with you, it doesn't work that well. It sometimes makes your hair look all flaky and stuff. Um, but I do like the uh, the way that he's, they're showing how quick you can build things. Like this is the yeah. part Trent Dane was talking about right here, where you you copy paste and then copy copy copy. So, I was I was really interested in the um, <clears throat> the bit where they show the cliff as well. There's like one shot of the woman uh, Eustace is her name <laughs> I forget but she's like in a sort of cave mouth and then there's a couple of other bits and then later on it seems like it's the same cave wall but you can't see the cave anymore so I was I was really curious about the scale of that because when I first saw it it looked absolutely monstrously huge and uh, I can't really I couldn't really gauge how big it actually was like if I just wanted it to be absolutely enormous or what I'm just so excited about the beautiful things that people are going to be able to build with this game. I mean, yeah. Especially people who are good with math. Or artists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, of all the, uh, the titles for the little sections they've shown, the, um, the, the create any angles is the only one I'd give the, uh, the announcer voice to. Okay. But, yeah, that's, um, that one there, the 18 minutes, 17 seconds to, uh, pretty much snow the area and completely change the biome that's pretty cool to be able to do that because mm -hmm. you know it gives you a lot of control that's one thing that most games I've noticed don't really do is give um, differential um, plant life and animals and stuff at different elevations and that kind of really misses something that happens in real life also real gradual transitions from one bio biome to another like in, in World of Warcraft you know you're exiting one zone and entering another when it suddenly goes from green grass to nasty brown dirt but they always so, did some sort of wall there was, you're always going through some sort of like hole in the wall kind of cave or something that always transitioned between there it wasn't like yeah. you went from snow to, to dirt in one step you know it was always some sort of line there it, it was still way too Sudden yeah, for, I mean, real for life, you know biomes are never that close together that or that different. Um, but that's a lot more in a way though because if you're able to switch around the biomes and then your your guy everyone around you is in a desert and they wanted to build in the desert and you decide to put snow <laughs> right in the middle of it, uh, how would that work? Well, these are these are gigantic plots of land, so I mean I guess someone could do that if they're gonna be a troll and then everyone just builds walls around that person's property until they leave. But um hopefully a, a better way to do it would be if a player really wants some weird icy patch in the middle of the desert, maybe it's some like old um ice shrine or something that somehow drifted there over many centuries and it's like under the ground or something. Then yeah, I could see you know having kind of this gradual transition from you know hot arid desert to this kind of swamp, swampy like sandy nasty <laughs> stuff. Mech. And then uh, yeah, the the mech is pretty awesome. And then you know kind of slowly getting into where it gets icy because there are definitely times when you know desert can have snow. It you know it gets freaking cold during the winter and it can sure, stay cold for a while elevation. I like the barrel but, of rockets on that mech yeah yeah uh, real quick though there, there's somebody in the people are saying that um, there's some problems with twitch yes um, right now my my better twitch plugin isn't working and I can't see how many viewers we have right now so yeah same for me 
Yeah, it's, 52. I can see we got 50. Yeah, 55 just dropped to 52. Okay. But even so, uh, the, if you're having problems with Twitch, it's not you, it's not us. It's just, I think there's a problem. Literally, there's a problem with Twitch. So. Oh, no. That is neat, though. Uh, the, the thought of having some kind of cave really high up on the rocks like that is really cool. I mean, you don't even have to build a house. You can build some beautiful place inside of a, of a cave because uh, the subtract tool that's in this game is, uh, is spherical. So you can take out hunks of rock in a sphere. And uh, you could yep. hollow out a big section inside of a mountain. I think yeah. we'll probably see a lot of uh, a lot of natural formations and stuff early on, um, <clears throat> just because it's it's the easiest thing uh, to make look good, and people are going to kind of want to make a place uh, their own to begin with. And I, I think probably later on we'll start seeing the more impressive uh, the more impressive builds as people get used to the tools and right. all of that jazz. Exactly. That's what I think. But the the part of this video that I really liked was uh, right at the very end when um, Mr. Georgeson started talking about basically putting the putting the power of the developers in the hands of of landmark players. That's that's what I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. and, hey, you want to talk a little bit uh, about that? Well, um, uh, yes. All right. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm expecting you. No. <laughs> if, I really don't. Um, if, if you if you'd like that, I did actually. Um, <laughs> Bit, bit of a self plug, but I, I started writing a, a column for Zam.com, and my, my first one was about um, what you know, what landmark, um, you know, what landmark could potentially become in terms of uh, not just a builder, but a tool for user-generated content. Because I believe, you know, the landmark is being released as you know, it, it, it's got all this sort of building functionality, and we can make, you know, what I'm seeing on the screen at the moment, great bridges, and you know, different uh, different types of angles on things. We'll be able to uh, reform the terrain and stuff. But they've really started talking now about in the future, we're going to be able to design the the AI of mobs, and we're going to be able to, you know, place things. And the the big thing that should have been the takeaway from from this video and from the PC Gamer article recently and all the ones before that in my opinion about Landmark is that eventually in Landmark they want the players to have all the tools that the developers of EverQuest Next are using to make EverQuest Next. And I find it so surprising that a lot of people's questions about the game are things like, you know, um, there was there was someone on on this video that that we're watching now. Someone asking if they if they could use a separate three D modeling tool to then put items on the player studio. And my response was, well, you won't have to because it will be eventually it will be built into Landmark. You'll be able to do it within Landmark because they're giving us the tools that they're using to make the game. And then someone replied to me going, oh no, you'll need the three D modeler. And I was like, no, that's not well. <laughs> Landmark is the tool that they're using. You know, it's been said so many times. Landmark is the tool that they're using to build EverQuest Next. We're not, we're not just we're not just going to be building houses like in Landmark. We're going to be building. We're going to be making content and making games within Landmark. <clears throat> and that's that's the big thing for me. I would say th there might be a little bit of nuance to the statement because. While they're using all of these tools to build EverQuest Next and Landmark, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the tools to model all of the content are actually going to be available in the engine. Um, the voxels can only get so small, and I don't know if there's going to be some way to, you know, work with the voxels and make a larger scale version and then you know scale it down later. But it seems to me that they probably will still have to use uh, 3D modeling tools to make things that are smaller than the smallest voxels and the you know the the modifications on those like the rounding and smoothing and stuff. Okay. Can actually, of course, right. we've seen we've seen that they have props and things. But my yeah. my point yeah. is, it's not it's not just a voxel manipulation engine. Like they've they've said that we're going to be able to introduce and model AI and like create our own mobs and things. You know, you're not making you're not making AI parameters out of voxels. That's obviously going to be right. a separate tool within the game, in the same way that a 3D modeler would be a separate tool within the game. And I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be lots of of different tools that are that are introduced as as time goes on. So think of it as voxels being the landscape and buildings. And uh, the props would be anything that is going to be modeled separately. Yeah. So, but that's that's the point. It's yeah. not landmark. Landmark isn't for making buildings. It's for making games. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's the ultimate the ultimate goal of Landmark is you know for people to be able to be able to make an MMO in the same way that SOE can make EverQuest next using it. They want people to be able to make something like that if they have you know the time and resources and energy to put into it, and if Landmark is successful enough to you know warrant that level of development into it. That's that's what they want. They want it to be a tool for for um, player generated content, and that's what excites me about Landmark. Cool. So yeah. I'm just reading some of the comments here. Omid's having some questions <laughs> with the. See if Omid's just going, nah, it's crazy. <laughs> no, no, he's he's talking with the people in the audience, which is great. You, know, you can build a nice house, though, you know, and it's it's in SOE's uh, best interest as well. Like, imagine, you know, it's it's very unlikely that people are going to be paying real money for the type of structures that we're seeing in Landmark at the moment. You know, is. They've, they've just shown the time lapse footage. If it if it only takes less than a minute to knock up a box to build a house, are people really gonna? Be spend yeah. like any money on on buildings. No, people are going to be buying. They're going to be buying props. They're going to be buying skins for characters. You know, they're going to be or buying super super detailed structures like some kind mm, of Viking yeah. longhouse that's built to the exact specifications of a real Viking longhouse. You know, something. I mean, like something that. something that takes like a, a real amount of time and dedication. But really, like with the with the building tools that we've seen so far, like apart from. Apart from maybe scale, um, you know, there's there's very few things that that you could do that I think would be would be worth buying because then once you've bought them, what do you do with it mm-hmm. within Landmark? You, you know, just, down, just, right? yeah, it sits there and it looks pretty. You know, you, you buy it because you want to use it um, for something. Someone I, I forget who it was, but someone had a really interesting idea about a, a kind of modular tower design where people could. Use use the different modules to just fit together a tower to make like a very quick sort of uh, bespoke dungeon experience. I thought that was very interesting. But um, yeah, that's that's the whole point. You you buy things to use them, and I, I think the things you know, if you look at the Dota Two workshop, that you know, the people want people want like unique skins and stuff. Look, and you're giving think- out my secret plans here. <laughs> that was me. That was actually. Sorry, just... sorry. <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a tower that goes up forever, like uh, mm. Unseen University from uh, Terry Pratchett. Oh God! Wait, that wasn't... <laughs> was that what we were talking? It doesn't matter. Everyone forget I said anything. <laughs> I was on a forum. Damn it! That's all good. But that's a, exactly that's that's a great idea because it it leads to it leads to content it leads to something it's not just a building and that's and that's another thing is the the collaborative aspect is you know you can you and your buddies or whatever are building a guild house or guild town rather and everybody has to build it in this very like Russian Sim City like fashion where everything's kind of built on a grid your house is this one this one or this one you can decorate it however you want. And you know the players, they they get the uh, the template from whatever whoever it is that you know made the initial design. They plop down their house in their little you know grid spot in the the guild town, and they get to do whatever with it. So people can just use you know the 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 templates and stuff in order to make something where everybody can contribute and pitch in and be a part of the bigger project in a way that fits the theme and the scope and the sky- style and the scale of it. So you have people able to you know work together and then that will actually translate into EverQuest Next itself, not just with Landmark, because I'd wager people are going to want to have, especially on role-playing servers, very tight aesthetic restrictions on the kind of buildings that will actually be allowed to go into whatever town to make sure that it fits the theme and the mood of the place. You, know, you don't want some like nasty broke down orc lean to in the middle of this you know otherwise nice lavish western looking castle that'd be great <laughs> it would be but it'd be you know it'd be out of place and then you know the homeowners association or whatever would start getting after that player and well, unless know. that's where your manservant sleeps <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah okay well i mean i guess it depends on the the size of the property plots every player gets which we don't know yet, but they have said they're significantly large. I mean, that there is an basically unlimited world. If it's procedurally generated, they just add another 10 million acres or something like that every time they run out of space. You know? That's one thing I've been wondering about is, like, ocean and access to uh, large bodies of water and then, you know, having it drained down. I can't remember if I had mentioned this the last one or not, but... The um, the elevator from Terraria, where you dig an elevator all the way down to the lowest level, so you can access it instantly. Well, if you do that under the ocean, it 
drains. You you basically you don't freeze over hell, but you kind of lock it in as obsidian and you know wash it all out. So it's uh kind of an interesting idea. Is you know what happens if you actually undermine the lake or the ocean or whatever and have it just start filling the underground. Mm -hmm. I guess it'd be like a frog lock paradise or something. <laughs> Uh, Layden says that they, he's read a few posts about people being turned off when the mech was shown. They don't want to see that stuff in the game. Remember, Landmark is a wide open for you to build whatever you want. So, you know, that's why they have the space, like the spacey looking tech outfit. And then they've also got like the fantasy outfit, the noble, the nobles outfit. Uh, is because um, different people have different things that they want to do in the game. Like, I'm pretty much trying to build the same thing. It just gets boring after a while. And all remember, like, none of this stuff is gonna like you won't see a mech in EverQuest next. It doesn't fit the lore. It doesn't fit the uh, the way the game is is being made. So you don't have to worry about that part. Unless gnomes make one. Well, yes, it could be some kind of, but then it would look more tinker like. I think. Yeah, that's true. More more steampunk would be kind of cool. All right, so uh, I guess it's time for the Q and A. Well, I do have one. Yes, by all means. Thing, thing about the video. Um, <clears throat> and it, it deals more with a, a question that had come up before the video was actually published. And somebody was mentioning um, there was some kind of a debate back and forth, I think, on the forums where people were talking about. They were kind of up in arms about the fact that, that in Landmark you will only have humans. Mm -hmm. Did I hear this correctly? As of right now, yes. <clears throat> okay. At, yeah. at some point, are they going to add other races for Landmark? Yeah, yes. Not only are they going to add other races, but from what I understand, when new races come out, you can instantly change your human to that race. Oh. As will like it, a one-time deal. Will it scale the clothes, too? Or are we going to have like an Incredible Hulk moment? And That'd be great. Uh, I, I hope that's what happens. That would be awesome. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I, hope, just, I hope that we can eventually make our own races within Landmark. <laughs> you laugh. Yeah, I heard you laugh. first. Locke made it up this right is, now. <clears throat> this, is on, this is on video right now. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this. Gosh, and I'm going to say it also when we're, doing, when we're doing our own models and building our own animation skeletons. I, um, I, I agree with you right there. I straight up want to rebuild Planet Side, you know, one slash two, taking the best elements of both in uh, Landmark. Amazing. Yeah, Locke, you're going to make a half orc, half dwarf character uh, race. Yeah, that that would be pretty sweet. Oh, and it means works. literally half. I mean, it's like, it'll, but it'll be kind of jester style. Mm -hmm. The upper left and the bottom right <laughs> parts will be dwarf, and the opposite will be orc. That'd be awesome. Sort of like kind of opposite orc, orc dwarf. Yeah. Orc. yeah. <laughs> a dork? Dwarf. <laughs> oh, yeah. a dork. Dork. Okay. W -O -R -C. Yeah, Fixix got it. Dork. Yeah. I know. We'll see it, man. I'm, I'm calling it now. We'll see it. All right, we heard it here first. Oh, oh, mean, make it happen, Captain. All right. Get on it. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the next topic. Which is. Yeah, it's missing. Right there. I can't find it. I've so it's lost what? my topic. It's what? QA? It's Q and A time. What? It's, it's Q and A time. Q and A time. Q and A time. The <laughs> poet. All right. Who wants to be our Q and A time reader? I'll do it. Okay. Don't hold us. All right. All right. I'll do it. I'm, I'll read them tonight. That's my turn. All right. From Dalen seventy five, about classes. So there is supposedly to, supposedly to be 40 classes so aside from just having trade skills as an ability would it not make sense for a good amount of those 40 classes to be crafting classes they had those in Star Wars Galaxies and one of those devs, devs had said that they love Star Wars Galaxies and it was an old SOE MMO any thoughts on this I guess classes is vague because they don't specify if it's a combat class or a crafting class or a you know, some sort of art or entertainment class. You know, you could be a ballerina. Use a pink tutu as your deadly weapon, or alternate would be a ballerina shoes. I don't know. Ooh. Whatever it'd be. You know, they they don't really. You know, saying saying forty classes is very vague, and you know, it could be even more than that. Uh, it could just be an estimate. Right now, we we really don't know how much they know exactly what they want to put in the game. 
they might have plans for 160 classes and they only want to you know start with 40 it's really hard to say mm-hmm. the ballerina thing makes me think of odd job from bond <laughs> <laughs> She's yes. like spinning and blades shoot out of her too, dude. Why not? No. I'd I'd like to see I'd like to see some crafting classes. I'd like to see some uh social classes as well. I think um the reason there are so many classes though is probably because of the build system that the combat will be will be based around. So I, I imagine the the vast majority of them will be will be combat classes, but it would be nice. It would be nice if, you know, Trade skills and other and other things as well kind of fit into the class model. I think that would be a nice touch. It'd be nice to have a uh, vanguard style diplomat where you're spreading influence around the world with your deck of cards. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be good. All right, this question is for Trendane uh, from Val Ravine. Sorry, I'm really bad with names. Will whips be an EQN? If so, why won't beast lords have them, or will they be included? in flails as a type. I imagine beast lords with a whip to help them tame and control their beasties. Why is this question for me? Why is it for you, Trent? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Deep. What have, what have you and Val, Val Rav... I don't know how to say it. What have you and this individual been up to? What have you and Raz Al Ghul been doing? Well, yeah, uh, we've been trying to kill week. Batman. <laughs> you don't see him using a whip, do you? No! Um, Might have one in his belt. The bad whip, but no, I hope um, it folds. It's like a little origami whip. Okay, so despite despite what the Castlevania series wants people to believe, whips aren't really that potent as weapons. They're, you know, you you would have to have a really long one and have a really slow time to actually be able to use. It's not going to break through armor. You're not going to be able to Indiana Jones disarm people. Whips really aren't, you know, they're, you're able to use them to make loud noises. That's, you know, that's practical. But you don't need it as a weapon. That could just be a real short one. And plus, and if, you're already, if you're already a beast <coughs> lord, you probably don't need a whip. You're already a lord of beasts, surely. <laughs> it's implicit. And whip whips are very much kind of a, a mid-range. They're not really a melee weapon. Usually, not usually. One of the things that you can do. I mean, you could you could wrap it, you know, like around a, a an enemy's neck or something to to basically kind of grapple them at mid range and then bring them in. But then you either have to abandon the whip or loop it around them again to try to get it around their arms. Mm -hmm. The only way you can use it in short range is to then turn it around, use the handle as a blackjack and club them. Otherwise, it has uh, very little use. It could be could you not, could you not dual wield a whip with like an an offhand paddle? So you whip and pull and paddle, and that's uh, you're not. It's one of the, that's one of the special. Classes. It had to be a paddle, huh? not, <laughs> not a you're, sword or a, a mace. A paddle. Your battle cry is, uh, "You've been naughty." You have to wear a black leather dominatrix <laughs> out, uh, helmet. Uh, well, I could see like a, a long chain with the blade on the end, like a, I think it's a gas arm. Uh, it's a you know basically you see them in all sorts of animes and stuff. They, they swirl it around, they throw it, and it goes like super fast, super far, and then they just pull it and it cuts the person's head off. You know, one of those things. That I could see that as a weapon. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be a flail variant, though. That kind of be more of a different thing. Cat of Nine Tails was pretty effective in the Passion of the Christ, I must say. <laughs> well, yeah, you can. You can. It serves the, the <laughs> recipient was not exactly armored up, if I remember correctly. No, no, he was unarmored. Um, he had a yeah. thaco of zero. Yes. <laughs> so um, ten. Weak penetration. Ten. Thank you. Is what we're saying. Forty. <laughs> <laughs> too soon? Oh, I'm sorry. Too soon. Yeah, it's been two thousand years. I'm sorry. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> sorry, Tim Dane. That's okay. Okay, so let's move on then. I guess uh, this next question is uh, for uh, Tobrin. Oh. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm doing the questions tonight, so I get to oh, see who sorry. gets to answer them. Right? Just okay. Omid. Omid saying I zoned out. What the hell is happening? <laughs> We always want to make sure we bring the audience back. Yeah. Like they're sitting there like, yes. okay, I'm playing some, some WoW or something. And they're like, what? <laughs> what did you say? Um, all right. This one is from Mobile Hero. Mobile Hero. Oh, we know him. Yes. Uh, do you think that there will there soon... 
Do you think that there should be a necessity of forming a group in order to actually play together? Or would a model where everyone would be able to play and help with people around them would be a solution? I guess AL, uh, ALA uh, Guild Wars 2. Yeah, the Guild Wars 2 system worked really well because everyone got the reward and you didn't need to party up. Obviously, if you wanted to do a dungeon or something that was instance, you would then need to party up. But if you just wanted to go around and explore with just some randomer, they might be in a group with someone else. So you can just tag along with them. You don't need to join a group with them. Mm-hmm. And it's, even if actually, you do, like what, there is no difference to it because you still get the same rewards. You still get whatever else you were going to get. So a system like Guild Wars 2 would work really well in a game like this, I think. It actually Especially encourages people to save you. Yeah. You're running for your life, yeah. and you know there's some tough critter chasing you. People will actually kill it. You'll get some of the rewards. They'll get some of the rewards, and you'll be all buddy buddy. That was a beautiful thing actually... I did like about Guild Wars Two is that there was a bit more sense of corrupt. Like you play World of Warcraft, everyone's like, "Die, fucker!" <laughs> you know, yeah. like you know, if he dies, then I get to hit the mob and I get to have the loot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let right. let him die first because he tried to take in my loot. I'm gonna let him die, and then I'll get the loot from the mob after he's dead. Um, and with Guild Wars 2, it wasn't that way. You know, everyone, you, you saw somebody on the ground, you'd run over and help them get back up, you know, and there was a lot of lot more interaction that way. I, I would hope that they would do something similar in uh, EQ next. So, Wasn't there something, some, like, super demonic rabbit or something named Fluffy, and people would, would train this rabbit all the way across the freaking world and then stand on top of an awning somewhere and watch it destroy an entire town? That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people used to do that in EverQuest 1. Um, in the, That's it, In these common lands, well, it wasn't fluffy. It was a griffin. Oh, sorry. And so there's this area where you had to kill these orcs. There's like a little orc camp right outside the east common lands. And, uh, or right outside uh, the west gate out of uh, whatever place that was. Whatever that town was. Anyway, you go outside there and there's a griffin. It would fly around, but it only came around every once in a while. And what people would do is they'd get its attention as a high level character that wouldn't die instantly and then they would run that griffin all around the zone and like start farming noobs is what they were doing. <laughs> Freeport, yeah. It was in Freeport, thank you. Outside of Freeport. So yeah, it's, uh, there there was some definite fun to be had with that. Mm. See, Malice says, I did that stuff, Domo. Thanks, Malice. I was probably on the receiving end of that. Because <laughs> that was the, that was the, no to blame. That was the rally call. There was two things you always re- yelled in, in EverQuest. Uh, the original one is boat, I meaning the boat had just showed up and it was time, you know, everyone who was close by could get to the boat before it took off again. And the other one was griff, because those damn griffin would come by and one shot everybody. All right, so next question. Yeah, I think if, if I may, with oh, that, yeah, with that it's interesting that the, the question is phrased in a, in a binary way, where it's like, should we have groups or should we, mm. should we all play together at all times? And I, I think. Um, the game shouldn't get in the way. It shouldn't be like mob tagging or last hitting or anything like that because that encourages players to, to not play together and it makes you annoyed when you see another player in an area. It's like, oh, I want to I wanna play here, but there's someone else in this multiplayer game. How dare they? You know, that's to me, that that's just doesn't, it's not good game design. But on the other hand, you know, having a group is good. You know, you want, you want those more kind of solid connections because that's when social stickiness starts happening. It's when relationships start forming that when you are in a more you know a more sort of structured group because then that's that's you know that's how the trust starts to build when you start speaking to people and overcoming greater challenges so i think in the open world i would like it if we could always interact and help each other and support each other and i think that should be encouraged in the way it was in guild wars 2 because that was one of the best things about the game i think and but i'm by the for the same reason i think that actually formally grouping with people should be encouraged as well because that you know that's what kind of creates relationships within games in my opinion so i say both why not both yeah speaking to people seriously i know speaking to people imagine a massively multiplayer game every time other people when i first started (laughs) playing wow when I first started playing WoW, every time I would walk up to someone, I would say, "Well met, ladies," and like, "We're not having sex with you." I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> we're not oh. doing cyber." Come on, <laughs> wait a minute. This isn't that I social of a game. <laughs> oh my god, the first person that ever spoke to me in, in WoW, I was in the, I was in the middle of Juratar somewhere, and someone came running up, and it was like I had no idea about MMOs at all. Someone came running out. I wasn't even sure if they were if they were a player or not. And they just ran up to me, yeah, yeah. ran up to me and said, 
give me all your money, just in say. <laughs> just said, give me all your money. And then just stood still for a few seconds and then went lol and ran off. <laughs> that was the last time I ever saw them. And I was like, this is brilliant. I was, oh man, I was, that, w- that had me for another nine hours. <laughs> that, that would be an awesome NPC, you know, thing. But the one thing we can look forward to, and this is still sort of on that same topic, is uh, we, we will have a Sony, Sony emote, SOE emote, uh, mm. which you'll be able to use your webcam and just talk and your character's mouths will move the same way that you're and I, I did a demonstration of this and a couple of you guys have done demonstrations of this and it's going to be much better in this game so and they have talked about that just like in Planet Side 2 the farther you are away from somebody the less you hear them if they're yelling or screaming or whatever so when you're walking through a city there is every chance that you will hear crowd noises that you're hearing other players chit chatting back and forth with each other while you're walking through, and that's a proximity speech. Yes, thank you, Mobu. Uh, they better have beard support. They'll have a beard support. The doors will have to have beards. Yeah, but I mean, the, apparently the SOE mode had trouble with people with beards oh. because, you know, the, the shape of the face. Ah, this is my revenge. No, no, no. It only goes off of your lips. As long as you don't have like a beard hanging over the front of your lips like this, then you're fine. As long as you're not a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, no, there definitely is proximity speech. They did say that that is definitely a thing, unless they've changed it since the uh, SOE live. But uh, uh, I'm just going to be running up to people, going, "Give me your money!" Yeah, just stand there with your hand out. <laughs> but yeah, vo- uh, in in-game VoIP is cool, but it's it's tragically underused. With um, you know how easy it is to get things. What's that, sorry? It might pick up with this, you know. I mean, there's times I want to sit here and listen to music while I'm playing, and I don't want my character's mouth to be singing the song, you know. Um, but I, I think, for the most part, if you wanted to communicate with somebody, I think it would be way quicker to just to talk. So, yeah, I yeah. do that on, on Second Life a lot. Whenever yeah. I get in there, and I'm I'm logged in as my, my huge, towering werewolf character, and I go walking into the, into the club, because I think it's awesome to take a werewolf into a club. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. just walk in and go, good evening. And everybody's like, oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> because Chen Dan's a voice actor. For those who might not know what he's talking about, he can do great some great voices. Um, and he yeah, will ruin your people immersion. Are, people are saying, uh, "Is dude, are you a girl in real life?" Yeah, you can always yes. you can answer that question. And be like, "Yes, I am. I'm just a transgender dude." Uh, but you could you literally they have some uh, voice modulators that are going to be built in too, so you can make your voice sound like a halfling or you know deepen it up to sound a little bit more like an orc. Uh, I just know that a lot of kids are going to want to use it just so they don't sound like kids because they get ha- they get harassed pretty hard on on games sometimes. So, um, oh, what the hell is your name? Uh, it's under your under your uh, lock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned you know that you were going to go running around doing that, and immediately when when uh, SOA mode when that ver- video first hit, and they were showing the the girl whatever her name is Euphigenia whatever her name is, um, yeah, and she was like. <sighs> And that's just exactly what I pictured. You know, this is like so emote everybody in the entire city. Oh god, another new. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. It's the, it's the reaction that I, that I aim for <laughs> in every social interaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> What's the mo- okay. All right, next question. This one's for Locke. All right, I noticed in the land. What was? Let's start over. This is from Palace Eight. I noticed in what. I noticed in the what is the landmark video. Oh, we already talked about that. Skip it. Um. This one's for Locke. This is for <laughs> Zenjai, Zenjai Pegleg. Uh, will there be physics enabled function? What an interesting question. Um, probably not at launch. I think they just want us to be able to build static things, but, you know, it eventually it says. Sorry? And fly. And fly. Well, you're gonna be able to fly up in the air and, and build things. I, I thought by I thought by f- physics enabling, they were talking about um, sort of voxels that have different properties, so that we can make we can make more machine type things rather than just building. Oh yeah, like red, uh, was, red blocks. Was that the question? I mean, that's how oh. that's how I interpreted it. Yeah, it probably I was. thought they meant like floating platforms. Yeah, like you could build um, a building in the air with no support. Yeah, like if, if you make something, you can give it a certain set of physical rules, like so whether whether it adheres to adheres to gravity or things like that, or you know, as as well making more mechanical machine type things like uh, pressure plates or or things like that. That's I mean, that's where my mind went with that. 
But phys physics enabling, um, I suppose eventually they'll want us to be able to build floating things, but then they'll also want us to have things that do obey gravity. So I, I guess there's going to have to be some kind of tagging or toggling system for that. The, um, um, what sorry, he's saying ahead. moving and spinning is what he's thinking. Well, that moving kind of, and spinning, yes. That kind of ties in with, with what I was thinking is that, let's say, for example, I mean, getting back to the whole building props thing and trying to build stuff that's very small, if you had like a, a staff that you had made that had like the, it was like a, a, a wooden staff, obviously, and then at the top it had kind of tree branches sort of thing, and in the middle you had a water voxel that was liquid and, and moving, but it didn't pour out from between the branches and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, obviously it would have to be able to move when you move the staff around or whatever, but it, so partial physics would apply. That would be really cool, actually. You might have to put it in some kind of a globe or make it some kind of zero gravity just around that part of the uh, around that part of the staff. Use a, some sort of transparent something or other just to bind it in the area. I mean, that sounds more like a more like a prop than a um, you know something you'd actually use voxels for at that point. So you'd actually probably have more. Um, access to like a volume of particle effects there. Mm. You're not going to be able to fly in EverQuest Next that you, the same way you can in EverQuest Next Landmark. Um, and so a lot of the buildings, that's what I think Com Comoresti 87 is saying, that if, they, if you build a building, it has to be able to stand up in EverQuest Next, meaning that yeah. it has to be structurally supported in the right way so it doesn't just tip over or fall down. So no leaning tower pizza. Mm. That would be awesome, just stack a million pieces up. But then the the other side of that is I I personally hope that in that in landmark they're very you know they're very open with what is possible and how we can we can break the laws of physics in different ways. Like did you see recently that new uh, I don't know how new it is but I, I heard about a um, Minecraft mod that introduced quantum mechanics um, into oh. Minecraft. So like they've Jeez. they've got blocks that if you view them from different angles they either exist or they don't. Oh. But it's only because of your position relative to the blocks, so and what cat. direction you're viewing them from. That, um, yeah, exactly. But there were a few different quantum quantum tricks that they had involved. But you know, it, it can it can be used to make very interesting uh, traps and puzzles. So That's perhaps cool. you know, it maybe even take it as far as that. Hopefully. That would be like um, uh, antechamber with it's trying to the game based on I guess uh, non Euclidean space. Or you oh can, yeah. You know, Oh, I meant to get that in the sale. Yeah. I missed it. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, Sorry. well. It'll be oh, around no. again. Next it would time. be perfect for my English teacher in high school who only wanted us to write on one side of the piece of paper. Mm. And I, I maintained that, by God, someday I was going to create a one-sided piece of paper so I didn't feel like I was wasting it. Yeah. And I, the problem was is that she also had us take our papers up and put them face down on her desk, and then it would just cease to exist. And I was like, i gotta, okay, I got to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> That's right, ladies and gents, into the portal, quantum mechanics. <laughs> We're talking the deep stuff here, everybody. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Next question. Uh, actually, we're running low on questions, so if you guys uh, have some more, please throw them up in the chat, please. Okay. Uh, this one, I guess, is for Mr. Drunken Munkin. Mr. Legendary Neurotoxin. Okay, ready? <laughs> yep. You might not even know the answer to this, but I'm asking you anyway. Have you seen any info on the upcoming up, upcoming Kickstarter MMO Shroud of the Avatar? They have a really unique way of interacting with NPCs where they can actually engage you in a conversation. I found that really fascinating, although I don't expect it to be anywhere near like talking to another player. I think that's some really really add to the immersion of the game with Storybricks a bit of work. I think this is the same thing could be done for EQN. Actually anybody who's seen this game could talk about it. I have no idea. Yeah, I actually saw when Shroud of the Avatar uh, had the, the first little preview video and Richard Garriott went out with everybody and talked about the stuff oh. and showed off all of his equipment that should rightly be in a museum or something. <laughs> and, you know, that 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 stuff, um, it, it looks like a great game. It looks like it's got a lot of uh, procedural elements really trying to break, once again, trying to break from the mold of the current like wow eq to you know kind of mold that you know most games more or less fall into the the bad habits of or not necessarily bad habits but they're 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 things it's you know you know the the tune canon and d everybody's done it before you know it's they're they're not trying to reinvent 
um, the original MMO so much as make a completely new, different experience with Shroud of the Avatar, you know, based on all their experience. And I would say, you know, it's it's a good idea for, you know, taking all of the elements of, like, the entire Ultima series and actually around, I think, number eight, they actually started getting some really um, worthwhile conversation with NPCs, mm-hmm. more more than just, like, a list of keywords and then you select a keyword and they talk about it or they say some canned answer, oh, gee, I don't know about that. So that's, um, you know, one of the things that's really nice is that there's just so much diverse, complex um, conversation to be had. Now, you know, when we think about other, you know, AAA console games like uh, Mass Effect series, for example, it wasn't necessarily that you could ask every NPC anything, but you had a lot of stuff you could talk about. There was a whole lot of, whatever that sound was, a whole lot of, you know, conversation points and a lot of things. It was very responsive and reactive to, you know, things that happen in the world that are relevant to them. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, Fallout 3 was another series that was like that. So the idea of really complex, complicated conversation and dialogue, and especially using um, story bricks and interaction with story bricks as one of those, you know, uh, another aspect of it, um, could definitely be very. What are you doing, Trent Dane? Nothing. Uh, nothing yeah. <laughs> could could definitely be a um uh, a thing that's achievable in a request next in landmark and um you know depending on how complex they actually want to make the tools and things that react to things in the world um it could actually you know you could be talking to an npc and it's like i know this is an npc but damn you know the they they're a real smart npc they actually know what the heck's going on and they know that i'm actually trying to screw them over right now <laughs> all right <laughs> how do i keep them from figuring out that i'm trying to yeah. screw them over <laughs> It's it's one of those things I think Shroud of the Avatar is it's certainly one of the things that's got me interested in it is um the way that you actually you actually type to you you have to engage uh NPCs in conversation and they have this kind of parsing technology so you just type a question. And if the question makes sense and it's something that the NPC wants to talk about, they'll they'll just give you an answer. You know, and the answer that they give can be based on relationships and things as well. So, you know, you you Pull that up in a in a in some fancy AI, and you can. I don't know. I don't like the word immersion with things like that because honestly, like if I'm sitting on my computer typing, what I'm you know typing out what I'm saying, that's to me that would be you know that would take me out of an experience more than anything. But um, yeah, I think you know. Something like that? Didn't you oh, have to ask the, questions what? like that in EverQuest? I thought you did. The the, the original. The yeah, the original EverQuest, you did have to type, you know, questions and things to NPCs to interact right. with them. That's correct, and that's one maybe of the, one of the I, many maybe things. Maybe that's where I've been going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah, the, the, the passing technology for Shroud of the Avatar, I, I hope works really well because it looks really interesting. Imagine how much faster you could have learned that song if you had just gone back to the thing and said, "How do I learn this?" <laughs> Uh, right. But that yeah, that takes all the fun out. <laughs> <laughs> we were there for like twenty minutes. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. It was it was all cleverly edited to make us look super pro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like we knew what we were doing. Was it? Maybe I saw the pre edited version yeah, then. Really. <laughs> uh, this question is for Tobran. Yeah. Okay. No? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, having watched, this is from Cyril, having watched Laka Tobran in 99, I'm kind of hoping to be close to just as confused when I log into EQN the first time. What are your thoughts on this too much? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, just, just no. I mean, it was fun and all, but like they just gave you so much. You're just like, what do I do? Like, you, you just don't know what to do. Like I had this like thing that said, go to this guy. Didn't tell me where he was or anything. It just said, go to him. Yeah, this like, is hardcore. This cool. is the way we played games There's, in those days. So I know it's hardcore, but a you little point, it could be nice. Like, even tell me what zone to go to first, or no. just give me a run through of the UI or something. No. Go so, and fine. find. Okay, fine. You, fine. You, go, you can go out and you say, this is what this is what I want to do. The, the thing that they, they don't tell you is how, you know, if you're just plopped into the world and it's like, okay, 
I want to go out and do stuff. How do I fight? There's a trick because <laughs> otherwise you were a fetus and then you were all of a sudden a full grown man. Like there was no growth where you would have known this is how I walk out of this building. This is where I. It's almost like you just didn't exist and then you existed. But yeah, I mean, on the on the one hand, yeah, that's that's fine. But you know, you can walk around and talk to people. So obviously, there's like a gray area. You know, w walking around, you know, not even not even knowing how to swing my sword at something. To me, that that's not that's not good game design. It yeah, doesn't it doesn't have to cool. it doesn't have to direct you. It doesn't have to say go to this point on the map. It doesn't have to say you know follow this trail, talk to this person. It doesn't have to say read the note in your bag even. But I need to be able to. This is what we used to do. Function within the world. This is what we used to do. You used to have to stop playing the game, close it, go to a website called Stratix, and look up on Stratix exactly what the quest was asking you to do, and then come back. You know what that start is? Start the game up. That is bad game design. I'll or, say it. That's bad game design. That's or just you the way it was. If players are in, if players are in your game and they they don't know they don't know what to do, you know. That's that's the fault of that's the fault of the designers. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was just if it's work. if it's so puzzling that players have to look at a source outside the game and outside the game manual in order to figure out what to do. Yes, you are in you are in deadly waters. In fact, you might be in deadly towers. That was a game <laughs> that had very very little explanation. I literally bought a book that this guy wrote for thirty five dollars that taught me how to play EverQuest. Wow. wow. This was way back so, when. That was a lot of money because it was like, this is how you play. And it had everything step by step how to do it. Yeah. So I would if, say you if, if you don't know how to play the game, like, I'm all for running out in the world and finding things to do. But if I don't know how to talk to NPCs, if I don't know how to get quests, if I don't know how to fight things, if all I know how to do is run around and drown in a lake yes. in the city. <laughs> And, okay. and the way he is laughing it. makes it seem like you've done that recently. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. I didn't, I didn't, but I know someone who... Uh, so um, I would I would say Legend of Zelda is an example to look at. You start, you don't have any weapons, but you have a controller in your hand with finite controls. Up, down, left, right, A, B, select, start. So you have those constraints right off the bat. I can see a lot of times with PC games where they put you in and expect you to find that space bar, V, B, uh, control, shift, tab, 1 through 8, and the enter key are the relevant keys. And, you know, somehow you're supposed to find that. So that's... I think the original game came with a, uh, like a fold-out piece of cardboard that had, like, a, with the keys on it, I think. I know it came it had... with a cloth map. Um, the original box. I don't have it anymore. But uh, instruction manual. What was it? Yeah, there was a manual, but there was also like a fold-out keyboard thing that you could set on your keyboard so you could see what things did what. But that's it's been a long time, as all of you know. An overlay, you mean? It wasn't yeah. an overlay because in those days you had the old IBM keyboards, you know, the big clicky clacky ones. Uh, yeah. All right. Very so, difficult to sleep through. No. All right, moving on. Uh, this question, oh. I guess, is for Locke. Oh, God. All right, when do you think they will add combat? The video seems to allude to it being there on launch. I know they said eventually, but the video seemed different. This is from Malice9000. I had the same thought, actually. The way that uh, Mr. Georgeson was talking about was talking about combat, it did sound like it was going to be coming very soon, um, but so far... I, you know, the the last official line that we heard was not at launch. So I'm um, I'm still, you know, I'm I'm still expecting it. You know, long after alpha beta, closed beta, open beta, launch, you know, and then. So we're you know we're talking potentially even. What, where are we at now? Six months from now, you know, potentially. <clears throat> but so yeah, it's 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 one of those. It did seem, by the way, he was talking that it was coming sooner. But I'm I'm not going to get my hopes. <laughs> Because and the fact that it said morning. coming soon at the end of the video, you know, it was a pretty good indication. Yeah. Was we 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 all know we all know soon. We know yeah. that. We know. Well, we have we know we have attacks, and we know how we have creatures that respond to being hit by attacks, and we know we have voxels that respond to being hit by attacks. But do we have combat? 
No, those are that's like. Hey, do we the, do we know any of those things? Well, we've seen them from like even the SOE live video. They had the people live playing on the computers, well, doing the little thing. Static mobs that just sort of stood there with a stick. You know? Exactly. We have we have attacks. We have things that respond to attacks, and we have voxels that respond to attacks. That isn't combat. No. That's like a very yeah. basic prototype. We don't. We do not have combat. Probably so while we have we have a prototype that is the inklings of the combat system. And yes, one could, you know, use the, the canned creature with or the, the canned uh, Karen or whatever with the weapon and go and smack the can mobs in the, the destructible area or whatever. Yeah, they can do that and you know, it kinda looks like combat. It's mm. it's just a prototype. It's just, you know, simulating what it needs to for the purpose of the video and demonstration. That's all. Yeah. All right. Next question is for me. Yay. I tweeted Geek Domo about having a girl special guest, so I have to bug him about it here, too. When can we see some girls on Into the Portal? Locke's girlfriend can be a special guest. I ain't got a girlfriend. Shut up. That's his woman. <laughs> That's his my lady, lady person, friend. My lady person you're talking about. Yeah. Who are you watching? So Fu is going to be our next guest. <laughs> so, we, we so, have, I have no so, problem with having girls. <laughs> I have no problem with having the women on here at all. It just, for whatever reason, it's just a bunch of guys got together and started doing this. Yeah, for whatever reason. I would. Like, I, Trendane's happy. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to have her on. She's she's super psyched for landmark especially. Um, she's she super looks, psycho. Looks yeah, she's well, super she's psychos. a girl. You know. She's we're out of uh, room though. We're gonna have to kick one of the other guys out. Lock you out. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Does she yes. have a uh, like a weapon? No, the thing is, she's she's uncomfortably in love with Trendine, and I feel like you know if go. I we if I got right next to her like that, it'd just be it'd just be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, there's no beard requirement for the women. Matter that fact, is sexist. Get out. That, um, matter of fact, <laughs> without a beard would be preferable. She's a lady dwarf, and she's got a long, luxuriant beard. Yeah, shut it. See how much says, conditioner she goes through. God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Shadow Hope does. just had flashbacks of Trendane's tentacle abomination imitation. <laughs> Let's not do that again, okay? You caused some real uh, psychosis she'll, there. Yeah. She'll certainly pop up in uh, in my live streams once uh, once we're allowed to, to stream. In, in your, sorry, yeah. in your what? Live in my lives. I heard love streams. I was like, <laughs> she'll, she'll <laughs> pop up so in my love things. streams. Uh, back to back to EQ and that's yeah. No, the uh, no. I, that's the question I have: Is is Omid still here? Did he bail? Omid, we need special dispensation so that we can actually stream EverQuest next while it's in beta. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I know it's not going to happen, but I can no. complain about it. What'll happen is he'll give me special dispensation because he knows that my machine won't run it. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be perfect. It will. Trinidad's going to have a new computer soon. Oh, he's here. He's here. Okay. Omid. All right, Chen. Okay, Omid. No. Oh. Says, oh. Just no. Not even capitalized. <laughs> just N O, a little lowercase. No. Nothing. Oh no, we got a smiley face. There's still hope. Well, that smiley face looked a little evil. It's like a robot smiley yeah, face. Yeah, it's a robot smiley face. Oh. I, don't, I don't trust those at all. Shut down. That's it's why there's no girls on the show. Can you imagine? Oh. <laughs> it's that old phrase: never trust a smiling wolf. You know that kind of thing. Or or a smiling robot face. <laughs> yeah, that was lulling me down gently. Yeah, I know. I don't want to do much. I just kind of want to run around for maybe twelve to four, twenty-four hours a day, playing EverQuest next on my live stream. I mean, that sounds perfectly reasonable. I think it's totally reasonable. I mean, I'll get back in the habit of streaming. I just really want to play Landmark. Like, that would just yeah, me amazing. too. But we can't stream it for, till exactly. after beta. Yeah. It's, it's so annoying. There's so many brilliant games. There's so many brilliant games, and I don't want to play any of them. Me too. Because <laughs> you just want to play Landmark. It's coming. No, That's what I'm I feel at like, the moment. I'm like, I've just started getting into Dota 2, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, but, I, you know, I don't really want to play But it's not Landmark. It. Play I, just, I just got into the Hearthstone beta, and it's brilliant. Like, I really, I, like, I really, really dig it. It's just my type of game. Uh, what about not, this? Not really that, I'm not really that bothered about playing it, <laughs> you know. Well, was what about this, Omid? Okay. Just... Omid, I have, I have a solution that will solve everybody's problem. You give us special dispensation to stream Landmark so long as... We only show our landmark face over the stream, and we don't show the game itself. Like, oh my god! 
Oh my god, it's okay. Look at that! <laughs> I built this huge statue of women. You gotta see it, everybody. Yeah, honestly, I mean, uh, the, the sooner that you can lift the NDA, the better in the long run, because because um, <laughs> that's his call, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the reason I say that is because the more people that are streaming it, the more interest it's going to build. Domo, the game. Domo, the, the sooner you go to bed, the sooner Santa will come. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now let's now let's move on. Take your Benadryl and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, oh well. All right. Next question. Um, do you guys think there should be a continent where you have to actually defend your plot of land from monsters trying to raid you? Basically, a reverse dungeon where your house castle is the dungeon and the players are boss fights, and you have to have hire a guard NPC and such. Yeah, that sounds awesome. like they sounds they like they've, they've created an well. MMO version of a tower defense game. That'd be great, right? <laughs> Yeah, I want like laser that. beams on towers. With <laughs> What's the matter, Locke? What the hell was this that? Is, <laughs> this, is what, this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. No, there should not be a continent for this. Do you know why? Because SOE should not be running this. The players should be running this. The players should be setting up plots and making this themselves and designing the AI of the mobs that, and designing them to come and attack you at certain points if you want to play that kind of tower defense type of thing. We shouldn't have a continent. We shouldn't be given an area and like pat it on the head and go, go play. That's not what Landmark is for at all. We should be the ones building it. All that stuff is absolutely great, and I would totally play that. And hopefully, we'll hopefully I'll I'll get to come and play your awesome thing that you build in it. But no, they shouldn't give us it. We should make it. We should build it. Hey, Panique. Okay, here. that's funny because uh, <laughs> Panique actually works for Stratix. What a funny coincidence that is. And then Omi <laughs> just said, "Domo, I totally agree. We we'll do just have to balance all that stuff against quality, crashiness, etc." Shrouded. Okay. Okay. So here's Challenge. the plan. When it crashes, like I'm playing EverQuest Next Landmark, and I'm playing it, I'm streaming it out for 24 hours every day, and it crashes, I automatically play Nyan Cat until it fixes, and then it comes back. That's totally fair, right? Couldn't we do like a Nyan Cat? Um, so you just shut the servers down on you for like 24 hours. Just do that for like four hours while the servers are coming back up, and then it comes back and be like, "No, guys, I was playing all along. Nyan Cat just accidentally slipped onto my stream." <laughs> so, uh, one more thing for this question, okay. I would say. Um, <laughs> back on the question. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Um, doing packs, doing challenge packs, where you actually set up the creatures and their difficulty in the AI, and you put it out there, and players can then you know release that challenge pack on their world and try and their little you know plot and try to defend it as best they can so it isn't necessarily like a codified game so much as people being able to create a challenge scenario in the form of you know waves of enemies and players can choose to then you know turn those on and then basically fight until they can't fight anymore or Till they've had enough, or till they defeat them, or you know whatever the terms of it are. But I could see that sort of thing being a way to do that kind of like you know trying to defend your land from from raiding monsters thing. Is that you would actually you know choose to do that, or maybe somebody you give them the permission to put down the the monsters and they deploy the the creature challenge packs. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I just don't think did, that, we did like, hear a, li a little thing. Was it the Rock Paper Shotgun interview where they were talking about uh, Mr. Georgeson did uh, say that do, things yeah. like that, the sort of the more game type content would probably <clears> be instanced within uh, Landmark so anyone could access it and it wouldn't they wouldn't all have to be built on the surface, like you could go into it in a sort of instance version. But I, I quite like the idea of it not being on your own plot, but kind of I like the idea of people travelling to a plot. Like a famous plot where someone someone's built something that becomes incredibly popular and people really enjoy sort of playing it, and then you actually get a physical community around that area. I think that could be that could be very cool because we can travel freely, can't we? So there's no reason, you know, there's no nothing physically stopping you from going to someone else's plot, as far as I'm aware. I, I agree with you, Domo. I think we should we as as many times as he's been on the show, we should absolutely just call him Dave. Yeah. <laughs> My pal Dave. My dog's called Dave. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> we could we could get Dave on the, on the show. What, what kind of dog is Dave? 
I've never seen Dave. What kind of dog is Dave? Dave? Oh, he's he's upstairs with Foo. We'll get them both on the show. Mm-hmm. What kind of dog is Dave? Oh, I'm sorry. He's a he's a mix. Um, he's a mixed collie black lab. He looks like an adolescent black lab, but with spaniel ears. He's, Long he's hair. Pretty, no, What's I mean Georgeson. Oh. Longish. <laughs> what kind? What kind of dog is it? Yeah, what kind of dog is Dave Georgeson? <laughs> I think I think he's probably a pug. He's a dog. Oh, oh. that is no. All right, be quiet. <laughs> I love my pug. <laughs> I would like to now officially divorce myself from any involvement with this this heinous statement. Or the views and opinions statement. expressed by <laughs> Kit Tomo do not necessarily reflect. Oh, absolutely, yes. We must have that disclaimer. Anything I say in the show has nothing to do with SOE or anything like that. All right, next question. Uh, this is for Trendane, actually. Uh, from Gamer Goblin. I haven't Uh-oh. heard anything about this, so I was just wondering if you know if you can become a werewolf or a vampire. Personally, I wouldn't. I won't be one, but I think it would be cool to have it there. If you've never heard anything about it, then how could you possibly ask the question? <laughs> hmm. Now, could I? Yes, well, I could become a werewolf. Oh, you mean in the game? Yes. In, in the game. <laughs> you, can, you can be a werewolf or a vampire. You know, those are different classes you can pick, along with mummy and Frankenstein well, and ghosts totally and mummy. ballerina. Fruit brute. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online is that way. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> <I do. laughs> <laughs> and it allows me to turn into a werewolf as my boat. Um, honestly, I would, I would think not for for EverQuest Next in particular. I would think that no, that would not be uh, a thing. Though that would, getting back to the, you know, this being able to see at night and stuff, that would change things rather drastically. I would think, but no, I suspect that if you have been bitten. If I were designing it for EverQuest Next, I would say that if you have been bitten by either a werewolf or a vampire, you will be at a significant you know, disadvantage functioning during the day or whatever, and you would have to go and have a curse removed by either a high-ranking, whatever the cleric class is going to be, <clears throat> and you cannot cure yourself if you are a you know, you know, max-level every class kind of thing. It has to be externalized. Plus 1,000 internet points for Happy Hansel. Does sparkling count as bioluminescence? No, it does not. <laughs> because sparkling requires an external light source to happen. Mm, <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, next question uh, for Mr. Legendary Neurotoxin. Uh, with the world being so large and EverQuest's next landmark, what type of mounts would you like to see? Oh, see you later, Amid. Have a good weekend. Bye. See you, Amid. Types of mounts. Types of I mounts. mean, the classic mount, classic fantasy mounts. Your, you know, horses Horse. and steeds. Your flying things. But flying you know, things. then then getting more and you know, like magic carpets and you know, other random objects that happen to fly, and you know, just being able to naturally fly because you're a superhero because it's landmark. Um, or you, you really got a thruster pack built into your. Tech it, it's thing. it's one of those things where I almost feel like it should be a uh, regional restriction that people can apply to their terrain if they've got a claim there is that no you have to use you know ground transportation to get through this and then there could even be further limitations like you can only use the default stuff you can't come rolling through here with your giant tank and blast holes through everything tank. so I mean yeah I'm gonna have a tank I mean that's it that's gonna happen I'm gonna rebuild the mag rider it's gonna it's gonna be in landmark that's that's gonna be a thing but um yeah there's gonna be just mounts of all varieties you know fantasy stuff sci-fi stuff steampunk cyberpunk whatever get crazy with it write a giant octopus write a giant flying octopus Tree swing octopus. <laughs> tree swing <laughs> octopus. Yes. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I ended up uh, at last time we were we were talking about this, wasn't it? I don't know. What, that's the question. What kind of mounts would you like to see? What, what kind of mount would I would I like to ride? Tiny elephant. Tiny <laughs> elephant. Elephant the size of elephant the size of a goat. 
understand. Is it a screaming goat? <laughs> no, it's an elephant. Or, or a fainting goat. A fainting goat would be great as a mount. Every time somebody ran up to him, they're like, ah! <laughs> I'm talking about adventure. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a dwarf as well, so I'm just gonna be like little and stout, and the elephant's gonna use its trunk to pick apples up off the floor and pass them up to me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a bite with my hands still on the reins, and then it's gonna eat it itself. Probably, probably none of that will happen. But tiny elephant, voxel that's, apples. That's like, yeah. that's like sharing a toothbrush with your pet. That's, I don't know about that. Yeah. All right. I guess this is our final question uh, from Snowman Wilkie. No. Hello. With information that has come out recently for Landmark, how has it affected your vision of your steakhouse? Steakhouse. That's uh, <laughs> the first. The first thing that I'm going to build when the when the building tools uh, come out. I've just I've got this little idea. I really like kind of. Um, uh, I, I like the whole kind of beer hall thing. I like the the Viking longhouse thing. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of mashing those together with the with the sort of Celtic designs and stuff that uh, you see as well. A lot a lot of very typical kind of Tolkien fantasy dwarf type of stuff. But make it make it a little town that's kind of it's it's not quite an outpost, but it's not quite connected. It's like on the trade route. So because it's on the trade route, you get a lot of outside influences as well. And like there's a few nefarious characters. You know, Foo's going to be building a um, a dwarf and strip club uh, just next to the steakhouse uh, called the bearded clam so uh, everyone's everyone's welcome to come down That's and uh, ha have a have a tipple at the bearded clam and then uh, <laughs> come down to the steakhouse <laughs> afterwards Dane's gonna pass out now by the way <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with the bearded clam <laughs> what, what I was kind of hoping for and actually actually something that that might be a bit of a letdown for me because we don't know about building underground and I was kind of hoping that over the top it would be quite sort of Quite sort of modest, apart from the big neon sign for the bearded clam, which will obviously <laughs> be rather garish. But, you yeah, know, I want to kind of have these, have confirmed. these sort of underground, underground like beer keller type of things, like mm -hmm. sort of traditional, sort of Eastern European meets Viking meets Celtic. So that's that's a little, that's just a few ideas I've had. But obviously, that's just when we have building tools. Later on, I'm going to be, I'm going to be building um, PvP <laughs> or based around quantum mechanics. Uh, Trendane will never visit. And the, and the one clarification is it a nipple, a tipple, or a ripple? Or a whipple? <laughs> no, um, it's, it's if more you, of a uh, teppanyaki if you, if kind you buy, of thing. <laughs> if you buy two, you get the third free. How about that? Ooh, that's a tipple? <laughs> I get a triple with a tipple. <laughs> All that's right. The that's the triple, only at the bearded clam. At Come the bearded on clam. I think that name's been taken, but okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it for tonight. To uh, an hour and a half. It's not bad. Hour and forty minutes. By the time we're done, it's okay. We're very good. Uh, all good. right. So real quick, uh, Mister uh, at Drunken Monkey down there. Tell Drunken Monkey. Drunken Monkey. Tell us about your <laughs> Drunk, <laughs> Drunken Monkey. Drunken Monkey. Drunk. Tune in next week to find out if Drunken Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get this right. You know my my history with names is just like. Call well, yourself Bob or something. I'm cool, but anything after that, I, I get a little. So bit neurotoxin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Tell us about your channel. Yes. YouTube. Twitch, um. Twitter. I was doing a little bit of live streaming here and there on Twitch. Um, that's kind of been on hold. I should probably start again pretty soon. There's nothing really stopping me. Um, no NDAs, but. but well, for this, yeah, but you know, other games and projects and stuff, or my own stuff, I probably should have done a live stream playthrough of Ninju when I was playing it. That's a game that I made. Everybody, Ninju saves Hanukkah. Made that a couple of years ago. I um, say it sounds like Ninju. It's like Ninja <laughs> Jews. Yes, yes, it is. They throw is. stars of David. Yes, okay. yes. I just thought that maybe it might be that. The, the highest level version of it is the superstar of David. Yeah. That's beautiful. Is the phrase nin, ninjutsu <laughs> racist? <laughs> Ninju? Maybe. Nin, ninjutsu. <laughs> I don't know that. What I will tell you is the difference between jujitsu and judo. Jujitsu is a style about, you know, grapples and tackles, and judo is what you use to make bagels. Hey! Oh, hey! <laughs> Right, next week. I am Jewish, so I can. You can, I can. do that. Uh, <laughs> Very good. All right, uh, cool, Mister Locks. Sixth time, tell us about your stuff. 
Hello, um, I've got a I've got a channel on YouTube where I do videos. Uh, I've got a series called the Voxel Populo where I I talk in general design terms about EverQuest Next and EverQuest Next landmark. Um, so you might be interested in that. There's another series called Project Ninety Nine. Uh, Party like it's 1999, which no one should ever watch ever. ever. Don't, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Run away if you see it. Matter of fact, turn it off. Um, make sure the kids don't. <laughs> I am. Yeah, definitely uh, should I'm a, what, what else do I do? I'm on this show, mm -hmm. uh, so you can watch this and have a lovely time. And uh, I'm a. I write a column for for Zam.com, uh, which is about EverQuest Next and EverQuest Next Landmark. That goes up every Saturday. The new one will be up. Um, tomorrow because that's Saturday uh, <laughs> you can go read the first one while you're waiting with bated breath I think that's about it Yeah, YouTube, um, this come around my house, we'll have a cup of tea lovely, you live However. in London right? <laughs> uh, yes, London is the, uh, the big building with the flags ok, very nice we'll find it alright, Tobran, <laughs> tell us about your stuff my stuff, ok uh, I have a YouTube channel Mm -hmm. Where I do a weekly show where I do a breakdown of all the news in the EverQuest Next community. So, like this show, but like five minutes. Just a big globby mess. We do kind of. Yeah. Stress we ramble out. on so much, but it's so much fun. <laughs> like, well, it's so much song. more enjoyable. Just rambling on. <laughs> Great. Um, I also do a lot of live streaming on my Twitch page. I'm also on Evercast for a segment every week now, which is awesome. And I think that's it. And it's also really important to watch his, his Twitch channel, just so you can watch him not fly planes. Mm. Um, <laughs> not fly planes, try order pizza. Um, what else happened? Lots, lots of bad stuff happened. We called, like, American phone Never Neverwinter. I, oh, no. I, so I had so much fun. Remember that extra live stream? Oh, that was oh, yeah. beautiful. I laughed so hard. It was amazing. Anyway. Cool. And, then, uh, and then try to call American companies. Oh yeah, in the morning. Call Apple <laughs> through Skype. Yeah. Oh, just for the health, I'll probably go live after this. Yeah. All right, cool. So everyone, check out your uh, what's your Twitch channel? Is it just Tobran? Uh, Tobran ninety five. Okay. Because Tobran was taken. Oh, you're Tobran Ernwood. I didn't put that on this. Yeah. Place. All that oh, long, no. it's been wrong. You should have said something. You're so polite. You you UK types. Is it wrong? Oh. It's Tobran Ernwood. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm on the ball. <laughs> it's your name. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So uh, cool. Mr. Trendane, first off, everybody really wants to know what is the status of your new supercomputer? Well, I haven't bought it yet, so it's still in the hands of the the proprietors who own the various pieces and parts. It's almost like a quest, really, you know, to sit yeah. there and say, "All right, now go get this part. Mm -hmm. Now go get this part." And then I'll I bring back ten orc heads, and I'll give you a processor. <laughs> <laughs> but not every orc has a head. So right. you have to kill, you have to kill like that. 45 orcs yeah. to get 10 orc heads, yeah. yeah it's really important. strange how that works. Maybe because you just chop their head off, I don't know. I brought um, you all kids. What? Yeah. <laughs> Poor yeah, kids. Um, when orcs are about to die, they cut their heads off. But we and, did get uh, disbursement from said company. So uh, it's now just uh, ordering in the parts. Yep. The, the money is now in my PayPal account, and I will start ordering pieces and parts and whatnot, and putting things together and yes there will be um, a a look here's my beautiful new system video and as well as a thank you video for all of the people who helped by contributing to this thing what was it that the Taliban called it a beast system was that what you call it yes it's now I, beast. I will have a beast master account I guess and, so for anybody yeah. who's curious beast we raised board. over over twelve hundred dollars for uh, Mr. Trenday's computer Unfortunately, the site that we did it from does take a huge chunk of change. They didn't. He didn't quite get twelve hundred. I'll tell you that. So I now have thirty-five cents to He's buy a part. Thirty-five cents. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That would be great. And aside from that, I am trending everywhere. Yes, he does his own. Watch his daily dairy. It's uh, it's really good. Uh, Dear Dairy, my daily vlog. Yeah. yeah, he does a daily vlog. It's really funny. Especially good on Tuesdays, apparently. I've been getting a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> my, my TMI Tuesdays videos seem to be the most popular. It's like, oh my god, this story is awesome. It's like, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm the one that gets abuse. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. well, okay, and then uh, I'm Geek Domo, uh, and then Daylin just says, I don't know how you watch the chat, host the show, and are still able to get into the conversation. I fake it all. 
You'd what, be a great they, jazz musician. This is live. What? Yeah. <laughs> do it live. Do it now. Do it, do it live. Um, but yes, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to do this show. And um, I'm at Geek Domo on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. It's really easy. To find me. I'm glad nobody else uses Geek Domo because I use it everywhere. Um, if you guys uh, make sure you uh, follow this here channel. This is the EQ Nexus channel, and there are sponsors. Um, it's right down there at the bottom. And make sure you subscribe to this channel because uh, you'll get notified instantly when we go live every week. But we're trying to keep every week five o'clock on a Friday. So you know that was one of the biggest problems we were having when we first started doing this show was that we were sort of all over the place. And it wasn't anybody's fault, just that we had scheduling issues and stuff. But now we're kind of locking in at this time. So, yeah. Fuck it in. I'll get it. Yep. <laughs> that wasn't your fault. It wasn't any of your fault. We're just... <laughs> but anyway, uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for being here tonight. Thank you, Locke and Tobran and Legendary Neurotoxin and Trendane. Maybe next week we'll have a female of the species on. We'll see if we can coordinate that somehow. We won't get her a beard. But, <laughs> Unless it's brass, yeah. then like beard is required. Yes, and yeah. beer. That's there are that's the other women in real life out there. I've seen them. I don't. I don't think we've had any ladies asked to be on, have we? A couple have sort of asked if they could swing it, but we just I just never heard back from them. So if any ladies are in the audience who would like to be on the show, I, th and, I thought we asked Maka to be on once, and she said she didn't this, want to. Yeah, she's self conscious. I guess I don't know. Like she has anything to worry about with us, our mugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah alright so um, Natural Cat you want to do it uh, Make it should be on okay well we'll see we'll, we'll get this sorted out and by next week we'll have something one other thing I we'll wanted to mention we'll see how many people we can get on the screen <laughs> yeah. one other thing no we can actually this is about the limit I can fit on here we can probably get one more and have to get rid of the logo uh, but uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, we are going to be having a new portion of the show coming up so if you guys would like to have your video shown during this episode it has to be under five minutes long uh and we'll play it uh during the show so if you have a um, discussion or whatever what's up when you say videos what do you mean viewer submitted video so if you have a video about everquest next uh either landmark or just a regular thing it's some kind of you know whatever you want to talk about or whatever and it's just, you mean like video questions or it could be a video question that that'd be awesome. fine my only, my, the only reason I was asking yes. is is we, we have seen difficulties with uh, music for Yes, yes. If you have, so. yeah, make sure your stuff is legit because I can't play stuff that has, you know, real music, copyrighted music in the background. But just send it over to geek at geekdomo.com and uh, say you want to be into the portal video. And if it's a matter of fact, it probably should just be a question without any music. If you want to do a question, video question, we'll put you on the show. How's that? Or if you want to, if you want to do a little dance, or do if you want to demonstrate the, uh, the, <laughs> the weapon, the weaponization yeah. of whips. You know. Yeah, show us uh, your funny hat. Yeah. Anything you guys want to put up on the show, it's totally fair as long as it's under five minutes long and uh, n contains no illegal stuff, no tipples. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And uh, before we sign off, I want to plug the um, the brewing document one last time. Oh, yeah. If you have the uh, link there, yep, second. Oop, that's because um, I did I did spend a, a hefty amount of time writing it up, so yeah, I definitely like, uh, appreciate getting people checking it out, commenting yeah. on it. I I understand. I have a lot of very specific terminology in there that might make it really hard to digest so if there's anything you don't understand anything that doesn't make sense please do drop a question either on the EQ Nexus discussion we also have the same discussion going on in the EQ Nexus Alpha Forum so <coughs> if you have Trailblazer access say what's up on there too we actually have also a really good discussion going there but unfortunately <sighs> it's under lock and key Trendane will soon have Trailblazer Soon, Trendane will yeah, be able yeah, yeah. to read it. That was one of the other things we were supposed to talk about. Wasn't there their, their discussions about um, founders packs being giftable? There you go. Oh, well. Next week. <sighs> next next week. week. We'll do it next week. Do it live. And I might have forgot. A, somebody did actually send me a question, and I guess I forgot to read it tonight. Yeah. Next week. I apologize. Week. If you sent me the question, I apologize. Next week, we'll get it in. Sorry. All right. So we'll see you all very soon. Until next time, see ya. Be careless.